All right, so this is the reading of Act 3. Um, let me find the... Goodness. This is the reading of Act 3. Um, and just follow along as I go. You should be able to watch this video. Pause if you need to pause and you want to go work on your character sheet or answer questions or uh, do the villain versus hero for Romeo. But here we go. So Act 3. Mercutio, his page, and Benvolio enter with other men. So they're on the streets of Verona. Okay, Benvolio. I'm begging you, good Mercutio. Let's call it a day. It's hot outside and the Capulets are wandering around. If we bump into them, we'll certainly get into a fight. When it's hot outside, people become angry and hot-blooded. You're like one of those guys who walk into a bar, slams his sword on the table and says, I pray I never have to use you. By the time that he orders his second drink, he pulls his sword on the bartender for no reason at all. Am I really one of those guys? Come on. You can be as angry as any guy in Italy when you're in the right mood. When someone does the, sm the smallest thing to make you angry, you get angry. And when you're in the mood to get angry, you find something to, be, to get angry about. And what about that? If there were two men like you, pretty soon they'd be none because the two of you would kill each other. You would fight with a man if he had one w more whisker or one less whisker in his beard than you have in your beard. You'll fight with a man who's cracking nuts just because your hazelnut colored eyes. Only you would look for a fight like that. Your head is full as the fights in the egg and full of yolk. But your head has been beaten like scrambled eggs from so much fighting. You started a fight with a man who coughed in the street because you woke up a dog that was sleeping in the sun. Didn't you argue it out with a tailor for wearing one of his new suits before the right season? And with another for tying the sh new shoes he made with the old laces. And yet, you're the one who wants to teach me about restraint. If I were in the habit of fighting the way you are, my life insurance rate would be sky high. Mercutio, your life insurance? That's foolish. Tybalt, Protrucio, and Capulets enter. Oh, great. Here comes the Capulets. Well, well, I don't care. And then Tybalt to Bertuccio and others, follow me closely. I'll talk to them, to the Montagues. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'd like to have a word with one of you. Mercutio replies, you just want one word with us? Put it together with something else. Make it a word and a blow. So he's kind of like taunting him to fight. Tybalt replies, you'll find me ready enough to do that, sir, if you give me a reason. Mercutio, can't you find a reason without giving you one? Tybalt replies, Mercutio, you hang out with Romeo. And remember, Tybalt is looking for Romeo because he knows Romeo busted into the party and he's angry. Mercutio replies, hang out. Who do you think we are, musicians in a band? If we look like musicians to you, you can expect to hear nothing but noise touching the blade of his sword. This is my fiddlestick. I'll use it to make you dance. Gosh darn it, hang out. So he's taunting him. Mercutio's wanting to fight. Bavolio comes in. We're talking here in a public place. Either go someplace private or talk, other, talk it over rationally. Or else just go away. Out here, everybody can see us. Mercutio replies, men's eyes were made to see things, so let them watch. I won't move to please anybody. Men's eyes were made to see things, so let them watch. I won't move to please anybody. And then Romeo enters. So Romeo comes into this hot situation. Mercutio's kind of pushing it. Tybalt's pushing it. Vimelo's trying to calm everyone down. And Tybalt says, well, may peace be with you. Here comes my man, the man I am looking for. He's not your man. All right. Walk out into a field and he'll chase you. In that sense, you can call him your man. Tybalt replies, Romeo, there's only one thing I can call you. You're a villain. Romeo replies to Tybalt, I have, no, I have a reason to love you that lets me put aside the rage I should feel and excuse that insult. I am no villain. Say goodbye. I can tell that you don't know who I am.
So Romeo has just married Juliet. Okay. So Romeo is knowing that he's actually his cousin now. Um, and is kind of not telling him yet. So let's see what happens. Tybalt replies, boy, your words can excuse the harm you've done to me. They cannot excuse the words. So now turn and draw your sword. Tybalt is not backing down. I disagree. I've never done you harm. I love you more than you can understand until you know the reason why I love you. And so, good Capulet, which is a name I love like my own name, you should be satisfied with what I say. So Romeo was saying, no, I, I actually love the name Capulet. Don't, don't, don't fight me. He's not telling the truth, though. He's not telling everything. Crucio, this calm submission is dishonorable and vile. The thrust of a sword will end this surrender, draws a sword. Tybalt, you rat catcher, will you go, will you go fight me? So Mercutio is kind of disgusted at what Romeo says and draws his sword to fight Tybalt. Tybalt says, what do you want from me? Mercutio replies, good king of cats, I want to take one of your nine lives. I'll take one, and depending on how you treat me after that, I might beat the other eight out of you too. Will you pull your sword out of its sheath? Hurry up, or I'll smack you on the ears with my sword before you have yours drawn. Tybalt replies, I'll fight you. He draws his sword. Romeo, noble Mercutio, put your sword away. So Romeo's trying to stop it as this fight is beginning. And Mercutio saying to Tybalt, come on, sir, perform your forward thrust, your prosado. Mercutio and Tybalt fight. Romeo, as they're fighting, they're fighting and fighting, Fido, Romeo draws his sword. Drawing a sword. Draw your sword, Benvolio. Let's beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, stop this disgraceful fight. Tybalt, Mercutio, the prince has banned fighting in the streets of Verona. Stop. Tybalt, stop, good Mercutio. So Romeo's trying to stop this fight using his swords. Romeo tries to break up the fight. Tybalt reaches under Romeo's arm and stabs Mercutio. Mercutio, let's get away, Tybalt. Tybalt, Patricio, and other Capulets exit. So as Romeo's trying to break up the fight, um, uh, Tybalt stabs Mercutio under Romeo's arm. So he reaches under his arm and stabs him. Is this a mistake? Is it not? Who knows? Mercutio, let's get away, Tybalt. Mercutio, I've been hurt. May a plague curse both your families. I'm finished. Did he get away clean? So this plague on both their families is kind of foreshadowing to what happens in the end of the play. Benvelio replies, what, are you hurt? Crucio replies, yes, yes, it's a scratch, just a scratch, but it's enough. Where's my page? Go, boy, give me a doctor. Crucio's page exits. Have courage, man. The wound can't be that bad, Romeo says. Crucio, no, it's not as deep as a well or as wide as a church door, but it's enough. It'll do the job. Ask for me tomorrow and you'll find me a gra in a grave. So he's saying I'm dying. I'm done for in this world, I believe. May a plague strike both your houses. Gosh darn it. I can't believe that dog, that rat, that mouse, the cat that could scratch me to death. That braggart, punk villain who fights like a learned swordsman from a manual. Why the hell did you come in between us, Romeo? He struck me from under your arm. Romeo says, I thought it was the right thing to do. Crucio, take me inside some house, Benvolio, or I'll pass out. May a plague strike both your families. They've turned me into food for worms. I'm done for. Cuss your families. Mercutio and Benvolio exit. This gentleman, Mercutio, a close relative of the prince and my dear friend, was killed while defending me from Tybalt's slander. Tybalt who had been my cousin for a whole hour. Oh, sweet Juliet, your beauty has made me weak like a woman, and you have softened my bravery, which before was as hard as steel. So Romeo's trying to kind of um, make up for the fact that his friend just died, and he's blaming Juliet, which is very immature. Um, and he's kind of saying, you made me weak, weak, weak like a woman, which is a silly thing to say. And it's kind of like Romeo not owning that he made a mistake. Benvolio enters. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio is dead. His, his brave spirit has floated up to heaven. 
but it was too early for him to leave life on earth. Roman replies, the future will be affected by today's terrible events. Today is the start of a terror that will end the days ahead. Uh, Tybalt enters Benvolio. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Romeo, he's alive and victorious and Mercutio's dead. Enough with mercy and consideration. It's time for rage to guide my actions. Now, Tybalt, you call me villain the way you did before. Mercutio's soul is floating right above our heads. He's waiting for you to keep him company on the way to heaven. Either you or I or both of us have to go with him. So Romeo switched to vengeance and he's ready to to fight Tybalt. So Tybalt says, wretched boy, you hung out with him here and you're going to heaven with him. So Tybalt's up for the fight. And Romeo says, this fight will decide who dies. They fight, Tybalt falls and dies. So Romeo beats Tybalt uh, in the fight, the fight and Tybalt is killed. Benvolio says, Romeo, get out of here. The citizens are around and Tybalt is dead. Don't stand here shocked. The prince will give you the death penalty if you get caught. So get out of here, Romeo. Oh, I have awful luck, Benvolio replies. Why are you waiting? Romeo exits the citizens of the watch, enter. Citizens of the watch. The man who killed Mercutio, which way did he go? Tybalt, that murderer, which way did he run? Benvolio says, Tybalt is lying over there, dead. Citizens of the watch to Tybalt. Get up, sir, and come with me. I command you by the authority of the prince to obey me. The prince enters with Montague, Capulet, Lady Montague, and Lady Capulet and others. So, like, a whole crew's coming in. So the prince says, where are the evil men who started this fight? Benvolio, oh, noble prince, I can tell you everything about the unfortunate circumstances of this deadly fight. Over there, Tybalt is lying dead. He killed your relative, brave Mercutio, and then young Romeo killed him, Lady Capulet. So this is um, Tybalt's... Uh, aunt. Tybalt, my nephew, he was my brother's son. Oh, prince, oh, nephew, oh, husband, oh, my nephew is dead. Oh, prince, as you are a man of honor, take revenge for this murder by killing someone from the Montague family. Oh, cousin, oh, cousin, the prince says. Benvolio, who started this fight? And Benvolio says, Tybalt started the fight before he was killed by Romeo. Romeo spoke to Tybalt politely and told him how silly this argument was. He mentioned that you would not approve of the fight. He said all this gently and calmly, kneeling down out of, of respect, but he could not make peace with Tybalt, who has in an angry mood and wouldn't listen to talk or peace. Tybalt and Mercutio began to fight each other fiercely lunging at one another and dodging each other's blow. Romeo cried out, stop, my friends, break it up. Then he jumped in between them and forced them to put his swords down, their swords down. But Tybalt under Romeo's arm and thrust his sword into brave Mercutio. Then Tybalt fled the scene. But pretty soon he came back to meet Romeo, who was overcome with the desire for revenge. As quick as lightning, he started fighting. Before I could break up the fight, Tybalt was killed. Romeo ran away when Tybalt fell dead. I'm telling the truth. I swear on my life, Lady Capulet replies. Again, Tybalt's aunt. Benvolio is part of the Montague family. His loyalties to the Montagues make him tell lies. He's not telling the truth. There are 20 Montagues fighting in this awful riot, and together these 20 could only kill one man. I demand justice. You, Prince are the man who can give me justice. Romeo killed Tybalt. Romeo must die, Prince replies. Romeo killed Tybalt. Tybalt killed Mercutio. Who should now pay for the prince for pay the price for Mercutio's life? Montague steps in. So this is Romeo's father, not Romeo Prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His crime did justice justice's job by taking Tybalt's life, the prince replies. And for that crime, Romeo is hereby exiled. So exiled means kicked out or can never return to Verona. So he is exiled from Verona. I'm involved in your rivalry. Mercutio was my relative, and he lies dead because of your bloody feud. I'll punish you so harshly that you'll regret causing me this loss. I won't listen to your pleas or excuses. You can't get out of trouble by praying or crying or don't. So don't bother. Tell Romeo to leave the city immediately or else if he is found, he will be killed. Take away his body 
and do what I say. Showing mercy by pondering killers only causes more murders. So the prince will let him live, but he has to leave Verona forever. So that's Act 3, Scene 1. So we're going to Act 3, Scene 2. Juliet enters alone. I wish the sun would hurry up and so pausing real quick. Juliet has no Juliet has no idea what's happened in scene one. Okay, she's just at home and doesn't know. I wish the sun would hurry up and set, and the night would come immediately. When the night comes and everyone goes to sleep, Romeo will leap into my arms, and no one will know. Beauty makes it possible for lovers to see how to make love in the dark, or else love is blind, and it is best time is at night. I wish night would come like a widow dressed in black so I can learn how to submit to my husband and lose my virginity. So this is their wedding night. So they got married early in the morning and she's looking forward to their wedding night and losing her virginity. Let the blood rush to my cheeks and be calmed in the darkness. Uh, let me, let me a shy virgin learn a strange act of sex. So it seems innocent, modest, and true. Come night, come Romeo. Uh, you're, you're like a day that comes during the night. You're whiter than snow and black wings of a raven. Come gentle night. Come loving dark night. So she goes on and on to keep going here. She's talking about um, spending the night with Romeo. The nurse enters and she says to the nurse, oh, here comes the nurse. And she brings news. Very Every voice that mentions Romeo's name sounds beautiful. Now, nurse, what's the news? Is that the rope ladder Romeo told you to pick up? And the nurse says, yes, yes, this is the rope ladder. Juliet says, oh my, what's the news? Why do you look so upset? So the nurse knows what's happened. Oh, it's a sad day. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. We're ruined, lady. We're ruined. What an awful day. He's gone. He's been killed. He's dead. So the nurse is talking about Tybalt, but Juliet is assuming he, she's talking about Romeo. Juliet says, can God be so jealous and hateful? Romeo is hateful. Or the nurse replies, Romeo is hateful. Even though God isn't, oh, Romeo, Romeo, whoever would have thought it would be Romeo. So she's kind of making her think it's Romeo. What kind of devil are you to torture me like this? This is as bad as the tor tortures of hell. Has Romeo killed himself? Just say yes, and I will turn more poisonous than the snake with an evil eye. I will no longer be myself if you tell me Romeo killed himself. If, he, if he's been killed, say yes. If not, say no. These short words will determine my joy or my pain. The nurse replies, I saw the wound. I saw it with my own eyes. God bless that wound. Here is his manly chest. Here on his manly chest, a pitiful corpse, a bloody pitiful corpse. So she's kind of leading him on still. Pale as ashes and drenched in blood. All the dried blood was so gory. I fainted when I saw it. Oh my, my heart is breaking. Oh, my bankrupt heart is breaking. I'll send my eyes to prison and will never be free to look at anything again. I'll give my vile body back to the earth. I'll never move again. My body and Romeo's will lie together in one sad coffin. So Juliet is breaking down, thinking that Romeo's dead. The nurse says, oh, Tybalt, Tybalt, he was the best friend I had. Oh, polite Tybalt, he was an honorable gentleman. I wish I had not lived long enough to see him die. So Juliet realizes it's not Romeo, it's Tybalt. Juliet says, what disaster is this? Has Romeo been killed and is Ty Tybalt dead too? Tybalt was my dearest cousin. Romeo was even dearer to me as my husband. Let the trumpets play the song of doom because who can be alive if those two are gone? The nurse replies, Tybalt is dead and Romeo has been banished. Romeo killed Tybalt and his punishment was banishment. Juliet says, oh God, did Romeo hand, Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? The nurse replies, it did, it did curse the day this happened, but it did. Juliet replies, oh, he's like a snake disguised as a flower. Did a dragon ever hide in such a beautiful cave? He's a beautiful tyrant and a fiendish angel. He's a raven with the feathers of a dove. He's a lamb who hunts like a wolf. I hate him, yet he, he seemed the most powerful man. He's turned out to be the exact opposite of what he seemed. He's a saint who should be damned. He's a villain who seemed honorable. Oh, nature, what were you doing in hell? Why did you put the soul of a criminal in the perfect body of a man? Was there ever was there ever such an evil book with such a beautiful cover? 
Oh, I can't believe the deepest evil lurked inside something so beautiful. The nurse replies, there is no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. All of them lie. All of them cheat. They're all wicked. Oh, where's my servant? Give me some, some brandy. These griefs, these pains, these sorrows make me old. Shame on Romeo. Shame on Romeo. Juliet replies, I hope sores cover your tongue for a wish like that. He was not born to be shameful. Shame does not belong with Romeo. He deserves only honor, complete honor. Oh, I was such a beast to be angry at him. So Juliet is going back and forth. Back, thinks Romeo's dead. Finds out Romeo killed Tybalt. Uh, thinks Romeo's a snake. And now she's angry at the nurse for saying that. So Juliet's kind of a bag of emotions. On the on the stage, you'd see the, their emotions changing, going back and forth. So this, is, this, this act is very chaotic. The nurse replies, are you going to say good things about a man who killed your cousin? Juliet replies, I am supposed to say bad things about my own husband. Oh, my poor husband, who will sing your praises when I, uh, your wife of three hours, have been saying awful things about you. But why, you villain? Why did you kill my cousin? Probably because my cousin, the villain, would have killed my husband. I'm not going to cry any tears. I would cry with joy that Romeo is alive, but I should be. I should cry tears of grief because Tybalt is dead. My husband, whom Tybalt wanted to kill is alive. Tybalt who killed my husband is dead. All this is the com comforting news. Why then should I cry? There is news worse than the news that Tybalt is dead, news that makes me want to die. I would be glad to forget about it, but it weighs on my memory like sins linger on the guilty minds. Tybalt is dead and Romeo has been banished. So Juliet's just trying to understand everything, all this chaos. That banishment is worse than murder of 10,000 Tybalt's. Tybalt's death would be bad enough if it was all. Maybe pain like, likes to have company and can't come without bringing more pain. It would have been better if, after she said, Tybalt's dead, she told me my mother or father or both were gone. That would have made me make the normal cries of sadness. But to say that Tybalt's dead and then say Romeo's been banished, to say that it is like saying that my father, my mother, Tybalt, Romeo, and Juliet have all been killed. They're all dead. Romeo has been banished. That news brings infinite death. No words can express the pain. Where are my father and my mother and the nurse? So she's trying to deal with all this. She's realizing that Romeo being banished is her worst thing that happened. Again, third day, they met on Sunday. Monday, they got married. Tuesday, Romeo has killed Tybalt and has been banished. So this is going uh, kind of crazy. Hey, Shelby, you can go and uh, eat your snack and hang out in there, okay? All right, I've got to finish this. Uh, yeah. Hard on gas, sorry. Daughter's here. It's okay, it's okay. There you go. Okay, continuing. They are crying and moaning over Tybalt's corpse. Are you going to join them? I'll bring you there. Are they washing his wounds with their tears? I'll cry my tears for Romeo's banishment when their tears are dry. Pick up this rope ladder, this poor rope ladder. It's useless now, just like me, because Romeo has been exiled. He made this rope ladder to be a highway to my bed, but I'm a virgin. I will die a virgin and a widow. Let's go, rope ladder. Nurse, I'm going to lie in my wedding bed in death. Not Romeo can take my virginity. So very dramatic, um, trying to deal with all this. And the nurse replies, go to your bedroom. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I know where he is. Listen, your Romeo will be here tonight. I'll go to him. He's hiding out in Friar Lawrence's cell. Juliet, giving her a ring. Oh, find him. Give this ring to my true knight and tell him to come here and say his last goodbye. So Juliet is dealing with all of this grief, trying to deal with her, um, her husband being banished. And she is um, going back and forth, but she's going to, the nurse is going to try to bring Romeo, who's her husband now, to her bedchamber to comfort her. Act three, scene three, Friar Lawrence enters. So we're going back to Romeo, who's hiding in Friar Lawrence's cell. Friar Lawrence, Romeo, come out, come out, you frightened man. Trouble likes you, and you're married to disaster. Romeo enters. Father, what's the news? What punishment did the prince announce? What suffering lies in store for me that I don't know about yet, Friar Lawrence? You know too much about suffering. I have news for you about the prince's punishment. Romeo, is the prince's punishment any less awful than Doomsday? Friar Lawrence, he made a gentler decision. You won't die, but you'll be banished from the city. 
Romeo replies. Ha, banishment. Be merciful and say death. Exile is much worse than death. Don't say banishment, because he knows that banishment, he'll be taken away from Juliet. Fire Lawrence, from now on, you're, you're banished from Verona. You should be able to endure this because the world is broad and wide. Romeo replies, there is no world for me outside the walls of Verona except purgatory, torture, and self hell itself. So to be banished from Verona is like being banished from the world, and being banished from the world is death. Banishment is death by the wrong name. Calling death banishment is like cutting off the head with a golden axe and smiling while being murdered. Fire Lawrence replies, Oh, deadly sin, oh, rude and unthankful boy, you committed a crime that is punishable by death, but our kind prince took sympathy on you and ignored the law when he subsisted. Uh, substituted banishment for death. This is the this is kind mercy, and you don't even realize it. So Friar Lawrence is trying to talk sense to Romeo that your life's not over. Like you can go and live another life, and you'd be okay. It's torture, not mercy. Heaven is here because Juliet lives here. Every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy animal that lives here can see her, but Romeo can't. Flies are healthier and more honorable and better suited for romance than Romeo. They can take hold of Juliet's wonderful white hand and they can kiss her sweet lips. Even while she remains a pure virgin, she blushes when her lips touch each other because she thinks it's a sin. But Romeo can't kiss her or hold her hand because he's been banished. Flies can kiss her, but I must flee the city. Flies are like free men, but I have been, dis I have been banished. And yet to say exile is not death. Did you have no poison, no sharp knife, no weapon to use to kill me quickly? Nothing. Uh, so disgraceful except banishment. Oh, friar, damned souls use the word banishment to describe hell. They howl about banishment. If you're a member of a divine spiritual order of men who forgive sins and you say you're, fr you're my friend, how do, you, how do you have the heart to mangle me with the word banishment? So Romeo here is kind of uh, using the symbolism of a fly being able to see Juliet as being a better life than him being banished, which is... And Friar Lawrence is, and, and Romeo are a balance between maturity and immaturity. Um, and him, you know, obviously being able to live um, and only knowing Gen Juliet for a few days. Um, and he thinks it's not worth living. So Friar Lawrence says, you foolish man, listen to me for a moment. Oh, you're just going to talk about banishment again. I'll give you a protection from that word. I'll give you the antidote for trouble. Philosophy. Philosophy will comfort you even though you've been banished. You're still talking about banished? Forget about philosophy unless philosophy can create a Juliet or pick up a, to a, to a town and put it somewhere else or reverse a prince's punishment. It doesn't do me any good. Don't say anything else. Friar Lawrence says, oh, so madman like you are so also death. Romo says, how should madmen hear if wise men can't even see? Farron says, let me talk to you about your situation. Romeo says, you can't talk about something you don't feel. If you were as young as me, as I am, if you were in love with Juliet, if you had just married an hour ago, if then you murdered Tybalt, if you were lovesick like me, and if you were banished, then you might talk about it. You might also tear your hair out, your head and your collapse on the ground. I'll do it right. I'll do it right now. Romeo falls on the ground. You might kneel down and uh, measure the grave that has yet been dug, knocking off stage. Fire Lawrence, get up. Somebody's knocking. Hide yourself, good Romeo. Romeo, I won't hide unless all the mist from my heart sick groans envelops me like fog and conceals me from people searching eyes. Knocking fire once. Listen, they're still knocking to the person at the door. Who's there? Then Romeo. Romeo, get up. They'll arrest you to the person at the door. Hold on a moment. And he says, Romeo, get up. Knocking. Run and hide in the study just a minute. For the love of God, why are you being so stupid? I'm coming. I'm coming. Knocking. Why are you knocking so hard? Where do you come from? What do you want? The nurse from off stage says, let me come in. I'll tell you why I came. I come from Lady Juliet, Friar Lawrence opening the door. Welcome then, the nurse enters. Oh, Holy Friar, oh, tell me, Holy Friar, where is my lady's husband? Where's Romeo? Friar Lawrence replies, he's there on the ground. He's been getting drunk on his own tears. 
The nurse replies, oh, he's acting like Juliet, just like her. Oh, painful symphony. What a pitiful problem. She's lying on the ground, just like him, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up, stand up, if you're really a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into such a deep moan? So the nurse and Friar Lawrence are, are clearly showing um, kind of the maturity, the teachers, the mentors, trying to bring back Romeo and Juliet from his pit of despair. And Romeo says, nurse, oh, sir, oh, sir. Well, death is the end for everybody, Romeo. Were you talking about Juliet? How is she? Does she think that I'm a practice murderer because I tainted our newfound joy by killing one of her close relatives? Where is she? How is she doing? What does hide it? What does my hidden wife say about our ruined love? The nurse replies, oh, she doesn't say anything, sir. She just weeps and weeps. She falls on her bed and then starts to get up, then calls out for Tybalt's cries. Romeo then falls down again. She's calling out my name. If I were a bullet murdering her, murdering her just like a murdered her relatives, tell me, Friar, in what part of the body is my name embedded? Tell me so I can cut it out of myself. He draws his dagger. So Friar and Lawrence will go into a um, long scene here, essentially convincing him not to hurt himself and convincing him to uh, try to, um, to, to think wisely. Sorry, I had a student jump into my room here. So uh, he's kind of just telling him that, you know, you're being silly. You need to live your life um, to, to keep going uh, and stop acting this way. And the nurse replies, oh, Lord, I could stay here all night listening to such good advice. Educated men are so impressive. Speaking of Romeo, my Lord, I will tell my lady you will come. And Romeo says, do so and tell my sweet uh, to be ready to scold me. The nurse says, here, sir, this is a ring she asked me to give you. Hurry up. It's getting late. She gives Romeo Juliet's ring. And Romeo says, this makes me feel so much better. Friar Lawrence says, now get out of here. Good night. Everything depends on this. Either be out of here before the night watch men take their position or leave in disguise after daybreak. Like a little vacation in Mantua. Take a little vacation in Mantua. I'll find your servant and I'll update you now and then on your case and stands here, how it stands here. Give me your hand, it's late. Farewell, good night, and good night. I'm off to, to experience the greatest joy of all, but still it's sad to leave you in such a rush. So he exits and he's gonna go uh, to see um, Juliet. So, all right, so in scene, sorry, in act three, scene four, we are going to see Capulet and Paris are going to have a conversation, essentially um, talking about how uh, Paris is going to marry Capulet because they still don't know that Romeo and Juliet are married. And then in scene five, Romeo and Juliet have spent the night together um, and they are talking about their love. So instead of reading these, I'm going to actually have linked in the uh, Echo agenda the two scenes you're going to watch from YouTube. Um, to kind of sum these up uh, for sake of time and uh, you'll watch those and then you will finish the um, response to is Romeo a villain or a hero?